everyone to Radha Gopinath's temple for our weekly Sunday festival. Very grateful you are all here, especially to Shankarji, Minakshi Devi, Barry, and all of your wonderful guests. <clears throat> Back in the mid-1970s, two devotees, two of my dearest friends, God brother and God sister, Rukmini and Bardraj Prabhus, from their heart of hearts, they prayed to have a child that would spread the glories of God's names throughout the world. And Gorvani was born. <laughs> they pray, they perform tapasya. <laughs> they cried beseeching their Guru Dev, Srila Prabhupada, and the Lord that their child would be empowered for this purpose. And when the baby was born, they named Gorvani, which means one who would spread Vani, or the message of Gor, Lord Chaitanya. And what is the message? Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Goda Chandra Bole, Kota Nidra Jayo Maya, Pisa Chira Kole. Lord Chaitanya's message is very deep and profound. There are volumes and volumes describing the intricate explanation of philosophy on every aspect of life. But in principle, very simple. Wake up, wake up, sleeping souls. You are sleeping in the lap of illusion. Essentially, we are all spiritual. We are all a part of God. Krishna tells in Gita, Mamaivam so jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana manashashtan indriyani prakrishti dani karushati. That we are all satchit ananda, eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. Anandamaya Obyashat, as part of God, we are all seeking pleasure. And the essence of all pleasure is the pleasure of loving and being loved. Things can give pleasure to the senses and to the mind, but only love can give pleasure to the soul. And the origin of that tendency, which is the essence of every living being, is our natural love for God. And in that love for God is the spontaneous love for every living being. You cannot love God and not love anyone. When love for God is manifested within this world, it manifests as compassion, which is the greatest need. It is the very essence and foundation of every spiritual path. To be selfless, instrument of compassion. And that is the innate nature of everyone to celebrate the joy of love and compassion. But somehow or other, sleeping we are in the dream that I am a man or I am a woman or I am black or brown or white or yellow or red. 
or I'm American or South African or Israeli or Palestinian or Pakistani or Indian or I'm rich or I'm poor old or young Vasamsi Janani Yathavihaya Krishna explains in the Gita that this body is like a dress but who is it? who is it? It is seeing through the eyes, hearing through the ears, tasting through the tongue, smelling through the nose, touching through the flesh, thinking through the brain, and, and feeling through the heart. The driver of the vehicle of this body and mind is by nature united with all others in our origin. So Lord Chaitanya taught this simple process, wake up. Wake up to who you really are. And the simple method that he extracted from the Vedic literatures, which is very powerful for waking up the sleeping soul in this age of Kali, is God's names. Kalerdo dosa sanide raja nasti heka mahanguna kirtana deva krishna sya mukta sangha param brache that this age of darkness we are living in, or Kali, has so many faults. But there's one beautiful benediction that through kirtan, through chanting God's name, one can attain the perfection of liberation. This, in essence, is Gorvani or the message of Lord Chaitanya. And as far as I could see, this in essence is Gorvani. <laughs> His parents prayed, and they cried, and they served. For a child like this, and then they gave him this name, and now he's traveling around the world, bringing joy to so many people's hearts. Thank you, Gorvani. Prabhu, we're very proud of you. In a few days is Radhastami, the appearance day of Sri Radha. I believe you will all be in Vrindavan for that day. We'll be stuck here. <laughs> but it's nice to be stuck to a good place. <laughs> Radharani is the feminine aspect of the absolute truth. In all the great spiritual paths of the world, we find that God is one. And in the mystical, esoteric, aspects of all of these great paths, we find both a male and female aspect of that one God. Especially in the Vedic system, and especially in Vrindavan, we find the natural acceptance and very, very deep philosophical, cultural understanding of the male and female aspect of the one truth. Krishna is the all-attractive, supreme object of love, and Radha is the compassionate nature, the supreme lover, or the supreme abode of love, the origin of all love. There is a beautiful story in Vrindavan, which I'd like to share with you. There's a place called Shiva Kori, where there's a very wonderful temple of Lord Shiva, Rameshwara. And there's a small lake just close to that temple. Five thousand years ago, 
a jackal was drinking water from that lake. Now, among animals, jackals are not at all respected. <laughs> yes. Anim many animals are glorified by humans. Just like there's the, there's athletic teams called the lions and the tigers and the eagles and the panthers and the hawks, even the penguins. <laughs> but has anyone, and sometimes if you're beautiful, oh, you, you dance like a peacock. You sing like a cuckoo bird. You have minakshi eyes like a beautiful fish. So many nice examples. But have you, have you have ever heard anyone glorified as being like a jackal? <laughs> That's like the greatest insult. If you're a thief, a really cruel, selfish, Thief, you're called a jackal. Yes. I remember there was once a mafia person, because I'm from Chicago. <laughs> I know some of these things. There was a big mafia person called the jackal. <laughs> and that was great praise. Nobody, everybody respected him because he was like... <laughs> They were afraid of him. <laughs> Anyways, a jackal is just like a scrawny wild dog. Generally very dangerous. Eats dead corpses. And that jackal was drinking water. And because he was a jackal, actually was a she-jackal, forgive me, it was a girl was a she-jackal. Because jackals are not respected at all, some children saw this jackal and started laughing at the jackal and running after the jackal and beating the jackal with sticks. Would you like to beat a jackal with sticks, children? Good. Good. Thank you. I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> They were beating this jackal with stick, and this jackal was screaming and crying, and they kept beating it and beating it and beating it, and the jackal somehow or other rolled around on the ground and got up and ran away, and the children ran after it and was throwing stones at it. Jackal, 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 and the jackal was weeping and in pain, and somehow or other found a hole in the ground and jumped in the hole and burrowed itself in the hole. Then the children laughing and playing, they really wanted to make this jackal suffer. So they were yelling names into the hole. Then they got wood and straw and lit it on fire. So all around the, the, the entrance of the hole, there was a burning fire. And it was going deeper and deeper inside. They wanted to burn the jackal out so they could continue to beat it. The jackal was crying, screaming in pain. Just at that time, Radha and her gopi friends happened to be walking some distance. This is when Radha and Krishna were here on the earth. <clears throat> and she felt compassion. She told her friend Lalita, Please, no one should be suffering like this. Go bring that person to me. So Lolita ran and saw the children all waiting at the hole with their sticks. And she chased all the children away. Get out from here, get out from here. Then she put out the fire and she reached down her hand and took the jackal out. And she brought the jackal right to Radha, 
to Radharani. The jackal bowed, bowed down at Radha's feet and Radha kneeled down and patted her on the head and accepted her as her own eternal servant. Gave that jackal the perfection of liberation, prema bhakti, the ultimate perfection. Now the symbolism of this story is the jackal represents the fallen conditioned soul in illusion. Actually we are all pure spirit. We are all a part of God, Satchit Ananda. But somehow or other we're identifying with these with this jackal-like material identity, which is really an embarrassing situation for the eternal soul. And the children, they represent the threefold miseries of material existence. Adhyatmaka, the miseries of one's own body and mind. Adhidaivaka, the miseries of nature, too much heat, too much cold, earthquakes, tsunamis, rain, drought, and adibotika, miseries caused by other living beings, people, family members, enemies, insects, or whoever. And the fire, the whole, the whole represents material existence. And the fire represents the burning fire of material existence. Samsara dhavana lalita loka. The scriptures describe that it's like a forest fire. And the jackal's cry is the humble calling out for the mercy of Sri Radha. When we chant her holy name with that sincerity, then she will give us her heart. There is hope, ultimate hope, supreme hope for everyone. And the sepal means by which we can access the that grace is through the sincere chanting of the holy names. Gorvani <laughs> sang one beautiful prayer of Lord Chaitanya. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtana. Param Vijayate means supreme victory will come to those who take shelter of the kirtan of the holy name. Now we have to understand that this victory is not based on a material consideration. Sometimes there was one famous atheist person who said that whether one is a saint or whether one is a criminal, they both have to die. So what's the difference? Everyone's going to die. So if God's going to save you, then what's, what, every, every religious person is, has to die and every irreligious person has to die. So what's the difference? What is the saving? Where is the victory? In Ramayan, there are two stories of victory, which seem quite contradictory to each other. But if we understand the essence, they are one. First there is Hanuman. Hanuman 
was fighting for Ram. <clears throat> Ravana, do all of you know the story of Ramayan? Sita is the feminine aspect of God. Just as there is Radha and Krishna, there is Sita Ram. And there are other such manifestations. So Ravana wanted to enjoy Sita for himself. He was a person with a massive false ego. But sometimes people with really big false egos work so hard to establish themselves that they become really powerful. And they could really terrorize others. So Ravana was, from material standards, the most powerful man on earth. He performed tapasya and gained mystical powers. He could change his form. Each of his arms were like tens and thousands of elephants in strength. And he disguised himself and kidnapped Sita when Ram was away. Now there was a great war and we read about Hanuman. Hanuman, f he fought valiantly with his heart, with his soul, with his everything. There was no limitations for him. And he was a prominent part of the great victory of Ram over Ravana. And he has celebrated throughout all time. But then there was another devotee named Jatayu. He was equally devoted as Hanuman. When Ravana first stole Sita, he was carrying her. And at that time in a forest, Jatayu was very, very old. And Sita cried out to him, Jatayu, don't try to stop Ravana. He is so powerful and you are so old. If you try to stop him, you will be killed. Just tell Ram who has stolen me and tell him that we're heading in the southern direction. But Chatayu could not just stand there and watch. For him, that's worse than death, to do nothing in the face of an injustice. So Jatayu jumped up to fight with Ravana. And Sita said, go back, Jatayu. <laughs> You're too old. You cannot fight. But Jatayu, he attacked Ravana. He said, life or death, I will not allow you to take Sita away. And he fought with all of his power. It was a long fight. He gave his everything. And ultimately, he became so exhausted due to his age, that, and he had no weapons. Ravana had every weapon. Ravana cut off his legs and cut off his arms, his wings. And Jataya was laying there in blood. And Sita ran up to him and started to cry. She petted his head and said, you have given your life for me and now look at your condition. She blessed that. She blessed Jatayu with her heart of hearts. Then Ravana grabbed her by the hair and took her to Sri Lanka. Shortly after, Ram and Lakshman were searching for Sita. This must be the person that stole my Sita. And all this blood around must be Sita's blood. He must have killed her. Ram took his bow and arrow and 
jumped right toward Jatayu and aimed it right at Jatayu's head. He said, I will slay this demon. It's a thankless task. <laughs> He gave his life for Ram, and now Ram is chastising and about to kill him. And Jatayu cries out, I'm your devotee, Jatayu. I'm the friend of your father. It was Ravana the Toxita. I tried with all of my heart to stop him, but I was defeated. When Ram heard those words, he dropped his bow and arrow, fell to his knees, and said, Jatayu, to protect my Sita, you have given your life? I was exiled from my kingdom and lost everything. And then I lost my father, Dasarat, and then my wife was taken from me, Sita. But the greatest pain I have ever experienced in my life is now to see you in this condition, my own devotee, who even though you had no chance of winning, you fought for me. You fought to protect my beloved. And now you are about to die. Rava, the supreme absolute truth, wept tears of love and gratitude profusely. He embraced that pity, pitiful body of Jatayu that was chopped into pieces. And Ram told him, on this very day, I send you back to the spiritual world. On this very day, I grant you the ultimate liberation. Because you fought and you were victorious. Because you gave everything you had. Then chanting the holy name of Ram, Jatayu gave up his life and attained spiritual perfection. And just to show the whole world for all time to come, the gratitude of the Lord for those who sincerely give what they have in service. Ram performed the last rites for Jatayu. Lakshman got the logs. Ram personally lifted the body and put it and lit the fire. And Ram said the mantras and the prayers to send Jatayu to the spiritual world. Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita, we should not be attached to success or failure, honor or dishonor, happiness or distress. These dualities will always be there. Material existence is constituted of the, on the principle of duality, like two sides of a coin. You cannot have the head side of, tail, of, of coin and say, I don't want the tails. If you're attached to happiness, to that degree, you will suffer when there's distress. If you're attached to honor, to that degree, you will suffer when there's dishonor. Health, disease, life, death, heat, cold. It's a world of dualities. But to rise above these dualities, There's a beautiful verse that teaches us how. Atapum vijastreshtas varna shrama vibhagasha shvanushtatasya dharmasya samsidhyar haritoshanam. 
Krishna tells in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, if you simply serve sincerely, you will be victorious. It doesn't matter what the material result will be. If Bhagavan is pleased by the sincerity of our efforts, we are victorious. If we can sincerely chant the holy name like that little jackal, we can attain victory, victory over life, victory over death. Victory over all sorrow and achieve Anandam Buddhivaradanam Pratipadam Punam Ratasvadanam, the happiness we're all striving for, that endless spiritual love that is inherent within all of us. Thank you, Gorvani Prabhu, for enlightening us in this subject matter. And Janava Devi, her parents were also crying and praying for the same thing. And we're so proud of you. When she plays her violin, it's like the strings of our hearts begin to cry in devotion to Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.